Hello and welcome. Good evening, everyone. You are live with the New Mexico Department of Transportation. Hello, welcome. I see so many of you joining. You are live with the New Mexico Department of Transportation. We are excited to have you here this evening. Hello. My name is Jennifer Heyer, Environmental Planner with WSP, and I will be facilitating this virtual meeting on behalf of the New Mexico Department of Transportation. Thank you for taking your time out of your Tuesday evening to join us tonight for this virtual public information meeting hosted by the NMDOT. We're excited to share information with you about the New Mexico 31-128 roadway project. Keep in mind that if you are calling in and watching online at the same time, please mute the audio on your computer to avoid any echo or disruption, it just improves the user experience. If you don't have immediate access to internet, continue to remain on the call line to hear our presentation. Now, I'd like to just take a quick second to go over some housekeeping items. Only our presenters will appear on video tonight. The meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the NMDOT project website following the event this evening. That website is nm 31 dash 128 project.nmdotprojects.org. Community members are encouraged to participate live at the end of tonight's presentation during the Q&A portion of our event. As we move through our presentation, as I mentioned, we will get at the end to a Q&A portion for you to interact, and there are a couple ways for you to be able to participate live. If you are joining us tonight using Zoom, you have two options. You can select the raise your hand function under the reaction icon to ask a question live. Another way to interact with us is to type your question in the Q&A chat box at the bottom of your screen. If you are joining us only by telephone, you can still participate by dialing star nine on your telephone keypad and we will answer your questions at the end. We have a lot of information to share with you this evening, and you may want to get a piece of paper and pen to write down the information about the project and how to participate. If you don't have immediate access, you can continue to stay on the call line to hear our presentation. You can also request a hard copy of our presentation from me by contacting me through email or phone. My email is j-e-n-n-i-f-e-r dot h-y-r-e at wsp.com or my phone number 505 area code 878-6577. Now I'd like to take just a second to recognize the elected officials that we have in our virtual audience tonight. Tonight we have Bruce Ellis, NMDOT Commissioner for District 2. We have Catherine Brown, House Representative for Eddy County. We have Pat Sims, Lee County Commissioner for District 5. We have Sarah Cordova from Eddy County Commissioner, District 5. Ernie Carlson, Eddy County Commissioner. We have Jordan Yutze, representing on behalf of Eunice Mayor, Billy Hobbs. But we also have Stephen Aldridge, City of Jowl Mayor. Thank you for joining us this evening. We really do appreciate it. Again, on behalf of NMDOT, welcome to our event. My name is Jennifer Heyer, WSP, Environmental Planner, and I will be facilitating your meeting. Next, I'd like to hand it over to Michael Smelker, who will introduce our team members who will be participating this evening. Michael? Um, I just want to say thank you, everybody, and welcome to the meeting tonight uh, as part of the NMDOT. Um, I'm the project development engineer for the DOT, and I've been leading this project and will continue to lead this design build project throughout. Um, so today uh, we have uh, Francisco Sanchez, the New Mexico DOT District 2 district engineer. Um, I'll go ahead and um, let Mr. S Sanchez go ahead and give a few words real quick. Good evening, everyone, and, and welcome to the first New Mexico 31-128 alignment study and Des design bill public meeting. I am your New Mexico Department of Transportation District 2 engineer, Francisco Sanchez. Um, you know, New Mexico 31-128 is heavily tied to some extremely important industries that not only have a positive impact on Southeast New, New Mexico, but the whole state and across the nation. 
and MDOT and WSP have teamed up to address congestion, roadway deficiency, increased capacity, and most importantly, safety concerns along both, both corridors. We, we all are here tonight because number one, we care. You know, we all have coworkers, peers, family members that drive these highways every day. We wanna see action improvements on these important corridors. Uh, one of the most important parts of this process for us is public involvement. I just want you to know, know that every question, comment, and input is extremely valuable. After the completion of this presentation, I highly encourage your input. The NMDOT and WSP team is here to listen and learn. Your knowledge of this corridor is extremely valuable. I just want to know your voice will be heard and is important to us. Please feel free to share your comments. The more input we receive, the better we can address your concerns and ultimately construct a successful project. Thank you again for sharing your evening with us. I look forward to the presentation and your participation. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Francisco. I'll go ahead and introduce the rest of our team. Um, we have Terry Ward. He's the project manager for WSP. He'll be facilitating the rest of the meeting and giving this presentation. Again, um, before I turn it over to Terry, I want to just stress all of your comments and stuff, please let us know at the end or as we continue with this project and the, and the process, we're really excited for this design build project. It's gonna be a fun, exciting project in this area. So Terry, um, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you and Jennifer again, and I'll let you guys go ahead and present. Thank you, Michael. Next, I'd like to just walk you through the agenda that we're gonna have and talk about this evening. Tonight, we're going to give you a little bit about the project background and purpose and need for the project. We're going to talk about the existing conditions and provide you with some project context, talk about the NMDOT project development process, the preliminary alternatives, the comparative analysis and key findings, talk about the design bill procurement, specifically the phase one and the project phasing. Then we're going to go into talking about schedule and next steps. And finally, we will close out with a question and answer session. As a reminder, we will take your questions at the end of our presentation during that Q&A session. That will be about an hour from now. Before we get into our presentation though, I just want to point out and let you know that there are approximately 11 active projects in various stages of construction or development occurring in Eddy and Lee counties right now. Some of those are NMDOT led while others are city or county led. The purpose and intent of our meeting tonight is to provide you with information about the NMDOT's New Mexico 31128 project. And we really appreciate you being here with us tonight. Next, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the background of, of the project along 31 and 128, and then talk about the project purpose and need. New Mexico 31 is a rural two-lane north-south running roadway connecting US 285 to US 62 just east of Carlsbad. It's approximately a distance of 22.7 miles. You may also know this area as Potash Mines Road connecting Pecos Highway to Hobbs Highway. New Mexico 28 is a rural two-lane east-west running roadway connecting New Mexico 31 to Texas with an urban roadway section through the community of Jal. The distance of that is approximately 59.9 miles. You may know this area of New Mexico 20, uh, 128 as Jal Highway and the portion through Jal community as Kansas Avenue. Both roadways pass through largely unpopulated semi-arid lands of southeastern New Mexico, but both roadway segments are part of a major transportation network for local oil and gas production and extraction operations in the Permian Basin of Eddy and Lee counties. Both roadways are classified as major collectors, which means they help connect people in urban areas with populations over 5,000 people between areas of importance such as schools and employment centers. If you look at the map, You'll notice the New Mexico 31 portion of the project extends from the intersection with US 62 to the intersection of US 285 in Lovington. The New Mexico 128 portion of the project begins at the intersection of 31 and extends through Jal to the New Mexico-Texas state line. 
A big important focus of the study project has been our concerted effort to engage with stakeholders and reach out to them. The project area covers a lot of road miles and we are ensuring that all affected stakeholders are brought to the table to talk about their project concerns and needs. We really feel that we've spoken to all of them. To name a few, we've been working with our local government partners such as Eddie and Lee County, been working with those land managing agencies in the area, such as the Bureau of Land Management, been working with our industry partners, such as United Salt Corporation and Intrepid Potash, We've also been working with those industry groups, such as the New Mexico Oil and Gas Association, and working with our out-of-state partners, such as TxDOT. If you think we've missed your organization, please reach out to us. We want to talk to you and want to engage with you. So please reach out to us if you have not heard from us or think we haven't talked with you enough. This presentation and additional project information is available on the NMDOT's website for this project, which is nm31-128project.nmdotprojects.org. This recording will be there and additional information can be found as well. The purpose of the project is to improve New Mexico 31 and 128 to mitigate problems with highway safety, highway capacity and congestion, the condition of the roadway and related infrastructure. First and foremost, the project is needed to address safety. Um, uh, on New Mexico 31 and 28, for the six year period between 2014 and 2019, there were 722 crashes. 28% of all of those crashes resulted in fatalities and injuries, and 27 of those crashes were fatal. Primarily, the type of crash types included rear end, head on, overturning vehicles, and right angle crashes. The projects also needed to address capacity and roadway condition. Features of the existing highway and traffic flow contribute to safety and operational problems. These include lack of left turn lanes at intersections, operational problems at railroad crossings, high percentages of trucks, as well as vehicle platooning, the roadway geometry and cross section, and the pavement condition. Next, I'd like to turn the virtual microphone over to Terry Ward, WSP project manager, to discuss, to discuss the project and context and existing conditions. Terry? Thanks, Jennifer. I'd like to start with uh, talking about traffic and doing a little deeper dive. Jennifer gave you a little bit of an overview, but on 31 from 2014 to 2019, so those six years, there was approximately 169 recorded crashes, including three fatals. Interestingly, the New Mexico 31-128 intersection has a crash rate four and a half times higher than the adjacent highway segments. Here's some what we call heat maps to give you a feel for the density of crashes on 31. And what we think is interesting about this heat map is that it shows from zero to eight, or basically from 285 to 128, there's a higher concentration of crashes as comparatively from New Mexico 128 to US 62. And this will help understand our prioritization as we get later into our presentation. But you can see low, up to high in terms of the density of crashes. <clears throat> this one talks about crash severity. <clears throat> so the, the legend is green, property damage only, um, yellow being, or goldenrod being injury, and red being fatals throughout the corridors. And again, it paints the same picture of um, New Mexico 31 from 285 to 128 having um, higher density and severities of crashes. Let's switch to 128 then. From that same six-year time period, approximately 553 recorded crashes, including 24 um, fatal accidents along 128. And again, the similar um, heat maps. You can see on 128, a much higher distribution throughout the corridor of crashes. And there's some intersections to just be mindful of, Orla, Battle Axe in uh, New Mexico 18 in JAL. And then in terms of the crash severity, you can see again, a much broader distribution of crashes throughout the corridor. 
which, which makes it a little more challenging in terms of prioritization for our team. Let's talk about average daily traffic and truck percentage then. So this is New Mexico 31 throughout the entire corridor from 285 to 62, broken up into different segments. What's, what's interesting here to us is on New Mexico 31, after you get through 128, the traffic does reduce significantly as you look through the table here. Another thing I'll point out is we do have a growth rate. It's fairly small, less than 1%, but from 2019 to 2041, we have grown traffic by, by a fairly small growth rate. So the numbers are higher in 2041. And then if we switch gears to look at truck percentages, basically east of Refinery Road, 17% of trucks, and west of Refinery Road, the traffic composition is close to 14% trucks. Switching to 128, similar data. What's interesting here is you, you have the same lowering of, of average daily traffic or truck volume after you get to JAL. So from JAL to the state line, the, truck, the traffic does drop off considerably. We use the same growth rate for 2041. And then the percent trucks generally range from 20 to 30%. So there is a higher truck percentage on 128 comparatively as on New Mexico 31. We are aware of the traffic delay. This is a, a, a still photo, if you will, of a video that the city of Jail has from September 2019, where it showed considerable delay and traffic backup in Jail. Very interesting video that can be provided if anyone is interested. In terms of pavement conditions then, existing pavements are generally in poor condition. We will look to rehabilitate some existing pavements to preserve recent investments to the extent possible. That'll predominantly take place on New Mexico 128 where there's been some relatively recent full depth reclamation projects delivered. We will look to reconstruct a pavement in JAL. That pavement there is in uh, poor condition. We will consider new pavements in areas where we're looking at four lane expansions and new passing lanes. And we will consider the truck composition of the pavement loading or in terms of designing the pavement throughout these corridors. Drainage challenges, there's plug drainage structures, corrosive soils, there's floodplain areas in JAL, and there is some existing bridge scour in the Pecos River that we'll have to be mindful of. In New Mexico 31, uh, diving a little deeper, there's 85 crossing drainage structures and an additional 10 turnout drainage structures. There's many drainage structures filled in. Corrosive soils and drainage structures conditions, the corrosive soils are predominant from US 285 for the first two miles of New Mexico 31. Around the 31-128 intersection, what we call mile post seven and eight, and from mile post 10 to 14, which are past the New Mexico 128 intersection, about two miles for that four mile stretch. Also, as I mentioned, the Pecos River Bridge Scour, our river survey identified existing cow scour around the pier that you can see in the photo in the bottom left. Drainage challenges on 128, approximately 122 crossing drainage structures, additional 60 drainage turnout structures. Of the 122 crossing drainage structures, approximately 101 had some form of sedimentation or, or plugged in them. Corrosive soils and drainage structure conditions, the first 12 miles of New Mexico 128, including the Salt Lake areas, has higher corrosive soils. And then as I mentioned, the gel floodplain areas will be a challenge for us. Access management, New Mexico 31 has approximately 94 turnout locations. New Mexico 128 has approximately 308 turnout locations, plus an additional 30 turnouts to a frontage road that exists. We will potentially remove, or I will say likely remove the New Mexico 128 frontage road as part of the improvements. And we also are developing what I'll call priority access management improvements in both corridors that will roll out as part of our study effort. In terms of utilities, 
There's approximately 109 utility companies in these corridors and you can see the distribution on the slide. There's also fast lines or lay flat lines. And we were fortunate to be able to turn an ownership of all of those we have and will be expending considerable effort for successful delivery of this project to minimize the potential of utility delays once construction work starts. In terms of oil and gas activity, we are studying a 20 mile corridor on both sides of New Mexico 31 and 128, doing a five and 10 year projected activity of oil and gas activity, and then subsequently taking that to inform our, our roadway improvements and our intersection improvements to best position these corridors for not only projected traffic, but projected oil and gas activity as far as we're able to project that to that five and 10 year time frame. Next, Jennifer, I'll, I'll turn it over to you to talk environmental. Thank you, Terry. As part of the study phase, we are also investigating the existing environmental conditions along the project corridor to identify those that may constrain the possible alternatives or be impacted by the proposed improvements. Specifically along New Mexico 31 and New Mexico 128, there is no potential for karst and underground geologic hazards. This is a natural process caused by drain water slowly dissolving bedrock of underground voids that become larger and can potentially collapse. This condition poses challenges to the engineering design as well as constructability and contractor safety. We have field investigations and mitigation strategies under development to help address this condition. Additionally, there are also known archaeological resources within proximity to the project, and we are completing field investigations during the study phase to identify any significant impacts or mitigation needs as the project advances. As I mentioned earlier, we've been focusing on being responsive to the area's stakeholders and affected agencies, but it is rather challenging in this, in this area. One of the key challenges is that the New Mexico 31-128 corridor is a larger rural corridor, which makes reaching users um, difficult. Um, to, to help that, we've used some of the dynamic uh, message boards posted in the right of way for our public meeting today. Um, we've also used, because there's also then the combined urban section in JAL, which poses a different type of environment, that we're having a separate public meeting in two weeks on September 14th to specifically discuss the concerns and preliminary urban solutions in the Jaw Corridor. There's also then one of the challenges of reaching out to the oil and gas extractive industry companies. Many of those are locally, but others are centralized in larger city centers, such as Denver, Houston, Midland, and Oklahoma City, to name a few. And with that, to help us be able to reach and hear from those affected stakeholders, we've been working with organizations such as the New Mexico Oil and Gas Association. However, if you think that we have missed your organization, missed your business, please reach out to us. We want to make sure that we are communicating with you and being able to discuss your concerns. Next, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the process the NMDOT follows in developing projects and making decisions. Currently, we're in the early stages of the project, the study phase. For the New Mexico Department of Transportation, this is called the phase 1A-B. During phase 1A-B, we identify what improvements are needed and why we review the existing conditions and determine what potential options are available to improve the roadway. As the study progresses, we evaluate the options that may be feasible to carry through to design and eventual construction. We will continue to advance the study after this meeting and your input is key to helping us come up with one preferred option that we advance into environmental processing and preliminary engineering design. We will answer your questions at the end of our presentation, which will be in approximately 30 minutes from now. As part of the study phase, the New Mexico Department of Transportation considers a wide range of factors in their thinking. So those, just some of those factors include right-of-way needs, environmental resources, traffic safety, construction feasibility, community concerns and engineering limitations, available funding to name a few. 
looking at a range of factors allows the MMDOT to develop a solution that is balanced and meets the project purpose and need. With that, I'd like to hand it back to Terry to talk about some of the preliminary alternatives. Thanks again, Jennifer. So to get started, I'll recap the key challenges that we we'll use to develop proposed alternatives, traffic and safety, safely maintaining traffic and access during construction, karst, the Salt Lake areas, environmental stewardship, funding, utility facilities above ground and underground, and stakeholder engagement. So in terms of traffic and safety improvements, we reviewed the corridors and considered expansion to four lanes, considered adding passing lanes, reviewed the intersections in terms of enhancing safety and capacity, and we considered adding signals at 3rd Street and New Mexico 18 in JAL. Some of the research that we, that we utilized, and again, this is just some of it, we took some information from the Texas Transportation Institute in terms of roadway development in the Permian Basin and read through that and studied it for applicability to these corridors. We looked at the Georgia DOT, some, some efforts that they did on rural four lane undivided and, and um, four lane roadways with, with left turns. We looked at some FHWA restricted crossing U-turn informational guides. And we use the Missouri DOT in, in terms of passing lane benefits and design location. So again, this is some of the research that we looked at to give you a feel for, for how far we, we looked out in terms of these improving, improving these corridors. Proposed mainline alternatives. I'd like to start with a little bit of an educational uh, slide here. What is a typical section? A typical section is a graphical representation of the proposed work as if you were standing at a location looking down the roadway. And I'm gonna show you some typical sections. So I wanted to give you a feel for what we're actually talking about. Here's one, what we're calling the New Mexico 31 existing or no build alternative. So what's existing out there in terms of today is two 12 foot driving lanes and variable width five to eight foot shoulders basically centered on the right of way. And again, this is New Mexico 31. Typical section then, the no build existing for New Mexico 128, 12 foot driving lanes, eight foot shoulders, and it's really offset for all practical purposes within the right of way from 31 up to JAL, meaning, meaning it's not centered on the right of way. Here's a depressed median alternative then that we looked at for the corridors. So you can see the, the median in the middle is depressed. We're showing a 60 foot dimension from edge of driving lane to edge of driving lane. That median width could be reduced in constrained areas. We're showing two 12 foot driving lanes in each direction, a 10 foot outside shoulder and a six foot inside shoulder. Um, again, um, the, it's really centered, trying to center it on the right of way, but we do have some variability in terms of the center line of the roadway comparatively to the right of way. Here's a flush median alternative, a 14 foot wide, typically paved median in the center. So there's no inside shoulder. We use that 14 foot wide median, two 12 foot driving lanes in each direction and a 10 foot outside shoulder. Again, trying to center, line, center that within the right of way, but there's some variability there as well. And here's a typical section in the city of Jow, a three lane alternative with a center left turn lane, um, a dual direction or two way left turn lane, 13 foot driving lanes, six foot shoulders, a curb and gutter, and then a sidewalk. We call this a two way left turn lane or a twiddle uh, alternative. We did look at four lane and five lane, and I'll share a little bit more about that later. Here's a super two highway where we're passing lanes are provided um, in a opposing, opposite side. So you go through the corridor, provide them in one direction, switch to the opposite side and go back and forth. I'll call it a leapfrog type approach with, with uh, passing lanes alternatively throughout basically the entire corridor. And a version of this that can be looked at is called an enhanced two lane where there's periodic passing lanes, not so much the continuous approach to super two, but more of a periodic passing lane solution. So super two, continuous passing lanes, alternating locations, enhanced two lane, periodic passing lanes. So some proposed mainline alternatives. Um, this meeting tonight, we're sharing 
corridor wide solutions with some intersection alternatives we will provide I'll call it site specific solutions or intersection recommendations in a future meeting. But if we start on mainline on 31 from US 285 to 128 and from 128 from 31 to JAL, depressed for median four lane alternative was looked at, flush median slash raised median four lane alternative was looked at, super two and enhanced two lane. In the city of JAL, we, look, we're, we have a three lane with a twiddle or two way left turn lane alternative. We did look at four lane and five lane alternatives with city of gel leadership. Those were deemed to be too impactful and I'll share a little bit more with, with you later on that. New Mexico 31 from 128 to 62 and 128 from gel to Texas, the lesser traffic areas, we looked at four lane, looked at super two and looked at enhanced two lane. And again, we will consider the no build alternative or the existing conditions, leaving them as is as part of this study effort. Signalization then for the intersections. Um, again, intersections, we looked at signalizations, roundabouts, what we call the high T and R cuts. We'll show you a little bit more about what those are. In terms of the Mexico 31-128 intersection, we looked at at grade and grade separated, and we'll share some of those concepts with you as well. Okay, so some intersection alternatives. Here's signalization. Roundabouts or traffic circles as they're called as well were considered or will be considered. A high T, if you look at this intersection, it's a T intersection and the traffic on the very right of, of the screen has a through lane they do have a left turn lane, but they have a through lane with a concrete median separating them from traffic wishing to turn left. And then the actual merge point is pushed further downstream, if you will, from the roadway. So it removes those, those movements or those merging movements from the actual intersection location in a high T. Or R cut or restricted crossing U-turn. And we, we use some information from the Federal Highway Administration. And here's a depiction of some of the movements. So traffic on the, the side street approaching has to take a right turn, then make a U-turn to cross or to continue down in the opposite direction. So side traffic cannot make a left turn as they want to gain access either straight across or in the opposing direct, direction of traffic. They're also called a J-turn. So let's switching gears to the Mexico 31-128 intersection. Here's an at-grade crossing concept. We, we've made New Mexico 31 and 128 the through high-speed movement and brought New Mexico 31 into a T intersection with that new through movement. And then there's the at-grade crossing of the railroad tracks. This example, we've, we've kept New Mexico 31 as the through movement. We brought New Mexico 128 over to a new um, roundabout or traffic circle. So realign 128 and brought New Mexico 128 over to a new traffic circle, giving us some additional distance from the railroad track crossing. Here's a, a similar concept to the previous one that where we showed realigning um, New Mexico 31 to a T intersection, keeping 31 and 128 as the predominant through movement, but using a grade separation or a bridge crossing the BNSF tracks with an R cut intersection. So some of the improvements, there's five railroad crossings in the corridors, uh, pavements and geotech We'll look, have to look at very closely the karst mitigations Jennifer talked about. And then the Pecos River Bridge, uh, we'll look at rehabilitating the existing bridge and potentially a new bridge if we four lane that section. In terms of some proposed improvements in the, the, the land ownership, property surrounding the project is a combination of Bureau of Land Management or BLM lands, state land office or SLO lands and private. We're developing an enhanced conceptual engineering design or a 30% design that will be, depict the anticipated construction limits and right-of-way. And right-of-way acquisition and environmental permitting will be based on this enhanced conceptual engineering design that we're working on currently. 
Maintenance of traffic during construction will strive to keep New Mexico 31 and 128, including all access points open during construction, will coordinate closely with stakeholders. The contractor will be expected to provide look ahead schedules and anticipated traffic impacts, and tra but traffic delays are likely during the construction phase. Let's switch gears now and talk about some comparative analysis and key findings. So some comparative screening analysis that we use several design concepts were developed to meet the purpose and need. They were screened to identify the most promising concept using qualitative and quantitative assessment. The screening criteria that we used, and it was the same for all alternatives, safety benefits, traffic benefits, compatibility with public and industry needs, land use impacts and property impacts, maintenance of traffic during construction and cost or benefit cost. A review of some mainline design concepts then again, enhanced two lane is two traffic lanes with periodic passing lanes. Super two is the same as enhanced two lane, but continuous alternating passing lanes. Flush median four lane has four lanes of traffic with a 14 foot median separation, typically paved. And depressed four lane has four lanes of traffic with a median separation that's, that's depressed. The median width is typically 38 to 60 feet, depending on the location. So here's our first screening effort, mainline higher traffic corridors. So this is New Mexico 31 from US 285 to New Mexico 128 and New Mexico 128 from 31 to JAL. Again, those higher traffic volume corridors. We looked at four concepts, enhanced two lane, super two, four lane flush median, four lane divided median. You can see the screening criteria across the top of the spreadsheet. And then the legend, red means our team had a high level of concerns. Yellow means we had moderate level of concerns and green meaning we had low level of concerns. So based on this screening, enhanced two lane and super two lane are not recommended for further analysis, leaving us with four lane flush and four lane divided in those higher traffic corridors. Lesser traffic corridors then, the second screening on 31 from 128 to 62. And on 128 from JAL to the Texas, New Mexico state line, we looked at enhanced two lane, super two and four lane. Again, the same screening criteria. And from this effort, we're not recommending four lane for further analysis based on the overall life cycle cost that it would bring forth. Next screening was rural, major rural intersections. On 31, that's Refinery Road, 128 and 62. On 128, that's Whip, Orla, Buck Jackson, and we're studying a few others that could become major rural intersections. For these, we looked at side street stop controlled, signalized, R cut, high T, and roundabout. Again, the same screening criteria. We eliminated side street stop controlled and signalization, leaving us with R cut high T and roundabout. And I will note that side street stop controlled will likely be an alternative that is used for the non major rural intersections, just not the ones that have the higher traffic volumes. Here's one for the major urban intersections in the city of jail for third and 18. We looked at side street stop controlled signalization, R cut, and roundabouts, same screening criteria. And from this effort, side street stop controlled, R cut and roundabouts were screened out, leaving us with signalization as the alternative to advance. So I'll switch gears now to project delivery method, talk about design build phase one and project phasing. Design build, what is design build? It's a procurement method where New Mexico DOT hires a team to complete the design and construct the project. Why does New Mexico DOT wanna use design build for this project? 
Well, construction can start sooner as compared to New Mexico DOT finishing all design first and then going out for bids. And design build projects tend to move at a faster pace. It will look like a traditional project with contractor more involved in public outreach and key items such as maintenance of traffic, environmental compliance, and utility coordination. Project goals of this design build project, a highly quality, safe, environmental responsible, durable and maintainable project, minimal disruption to the local industries and traveling public during construction, a design build agreement or contract awarded and signed by the fall of 2022 and maximizing the value of the design build delivery method. The overall corridor improvements will be phased. New Mexico DOT will procure a single design build team or contractor to design and construct the initial phase one project. The design build project will have alternatives based on funding availability and New Mexico DOT will use a best value approach to select the design builder. The first design build phase, what we're calling phase one of the design build will be federally funded and consist of the following base element. Improvements on New Mexico 31 from 0 0.5 miles east of US 285 through the New Mexico 128 intersection, roughly eight miles, and includes improvements to the New Mexico 31 and 128 intersection. Estimated cost of this initial funded phase design build is 70 to $80 million. A first phase will consist of the following design build add alternative elements. City of JAL improvements, estimated between 16 to 19 million. New Mexico 128 improvements from 31 through the whip road, estimated at 40 to 45 million. And New Mexico 31 and 128 safety improvements, estimated at two to $10 million. These alternatives, again, could be added into the design build contract as deferred work under the design build agreement if funding is secured. In terms of project phasing then, this just gives you an idea of the extent of the corridors and a conceptual phasing on how we could recommend breaking it up into project deliverable project sizes. And you can see that it does take a number of phases to deliver these 80 plus miles of improvements in terms of funding and phasing the improvements. With that, Jennifer, you want to talk schedule and next steps. Sure. Thank you, Terry. The study began in the fall of 2020 and is anticipated to be completed by November, December of 2021. We are presenting this evening for our first public meeting. And in two weeks, we will have a public meeting specific to the improvements proposed in the community of JAL. That meeting will be on September 14th. As the study advances, we plan to have another public meeting probably in about early 2022 to discuss the alternative that is being carried forward. We're getting ready to begin preliminary engineering and environmental study this summer, which will carry into the spring of 2022. And we anticipate that uh, construction of the first phase will be starting as soon as fall slash winter of 2022. As Terry mentioned, this phase will be a design build procurement method and construction of additional priority areas will be phased and the time it will be adjusted depending on the available funding. For next steps, we are presenting this evening. We're gathering input from this public meeting as well as our September 14th public meeting. We will continue to ha um, have a 30-day comment period and be compiling all of that information. Um, we will then work on performing the detailed evaluation of alternatives, which will allow us to finish the phase 1A, B study. As the study advances, we will then have another public meeting that will help us refine the alternatives and start the initial engineering. Once we begin the initial engineering, we'll continue to advance those environmental studies that we started during the study phase, get to where we can have some environmental documentation completed. We will identify the right-of-way acquisition needs within the project corridor, 
then that will allow the team to develop those design build contract documents, such as the request for qualifications and the request for proposals. We'll then go through the procurement process and select a design build contractor team. Once selected, construction will begin on phase one. Well, you've heard from us and now we'd like to hear from you. And before we open it up for our question and answer portion of tonight's event, I just want to give you other ways in which you can comment in case you don't have any questions or comments readily um, right now. You can, after tonight's event, feel free to email me at j-e-n-n I-F-E-R dot H-Y-R-E at W-S-P dot com. You may contact me through phone, which is area code 505-878-6577. You can also send your comments through U.S. Postal Mail Service. Um, we will be compiling public comments throughout the development process of the project. However, to help us with furthering the project, we do ask that you provide us your comments by September 30th. And we do ask that they, if possible, are electronic since we are still teleworking. But you can use any of the means in order to provide us with your comments and your questions. As we mentioned earlier, there is a project website that will have this recording. It has a lot of information on there. And we do encourage you to go and look at those resources available there. That website is nm 31 128project.nmdotprojects.org. If you don't have access to the internet and would like to request a paper copy of tonight's presentation, please feel free to contact me and we will make sure that you uh, receive that. As a reminder, tonight's meeting is being recorded and it's available to watch. We're now going to go into our question and answer portion of, of our meeting. Reminder, if you have joined us through Zoom, you have two ways in which you can participate and ask us questions. You can raise your hand um, in the bottom of your toolbar and you will be able to come off mute and ask your question live. You can also go into the Q&A chat box in Zoom and type us your question and we will read those online. If you have dialed in and are listening with us on your telephone, feel free to press star nine on your telephone keypad. With that, we're gonna get into our Q&A session. It, um, we will be documenting those questions and answers as well as those others collected during the 30-day comment period, which we will then compile as part, of, as part of our administrative record and having our project team look and review those. So thank you so much for participating and let's take our first question. For those of you that joined us this evening, thank you so very much for joining us and staying on during our presentation and listening to what, all of the information that we had to present this evening. We wish we could have been with you in person, but are glad to be able to offer a safe way to get you informed and be able to receive your feedback. And this will not be the last opportunity for you to be providing us with your input. We encourage you to sign up for our mailing list be part of the process and provide us with your comments and your questions. I hope you have a good evening and good night. <laughs>